You would never believe it, but just as I'm filming the Drawn in Brooklyn exhibit, I ran into two of the contributors, Sean Qualls and Selena Alco, two of the most talented illustrators in Brooklyn. They are here, I suspect, for Family Day? Yes. Yeah. Yes, which was outside in the plaza. It's actually nice and quiet in here right now, so I'm going to ask them to say a few words about what it meant to contribute to this exhibit. Mm. Um, it's just really wonderful to... Uh, showcase work from book, the books that I've done while I've been living in Brooklyn and some of my books are about Brooklyn or they take place in Brooklyn right. particularly a book that I have coming out in about a year called Bias for Brooklyn and I have some work from that book in one of the uh, process cases in the youth wing yeah. that sort of shows the process and sketches and um, you know the behind the scenes work right. that goes into making picture books it's been really exciting Tell me what's different for you, the way that you see Brooklyn as an immigrant, because like me, you're Canadian. So do you That's think true. being, a, being a, an immigrant changes your perspective or enhances it in some way? Do you think you see the city differently perhaps than someone who was raised here? I think with um, more enthusiasm and fresh eyes, um, Sean actually convinced me to move out here uh, when we were first together. I was living in the, uh, Manhattan, the Lower East Side, and... Okay. Um, he had, you know, nothing but fabulous things to, to seduce me to, toward Brooklyn. So, you know, <laughs> smart guy, the trees, and <laughs> more space, and all those yeah. great things. And I, it really yeah. is true. And and now that we have uh, a couple kids, um, it's just it really is a great place to raise a family. So, yeah. um, I hey. really love it here. Thank you, Sean. You are from where? I'm originally from Bordentown, New Jersey. New Jersey. Yes. All right. And so what does it mean to you to be an artist that's living and working and raising kids in Brooklyn? Um, I mean, I feel like Brooklyn's sort of like the world. I feel like, you know, not everything, but most things Almost. that are happening and interesting are happening in Brooklyn. Right. And, you know, I just ended up living here because I was going to Pratt Institute. And after I left Pratt... I didn't know where else to go, so right. I just sort of stayed in Brooklyn. Okay. Um, and it just so happens that, you know, most things I love are here in Brooklyn, you know. It's family friendly, friend, family friendly. it's incredibly creative, mm -hmm. you know, we have a community of other illustrators, and people in the industry that we're friends with who all live here, so... Does that create a kind of competitive environment? I'm going to ask Selena oh. that, too. Um, I mean, you two are in the same profession. Right. So <laughs> Living in the same what household. What a question. <laughs> um, I don't know. Is it I mean, synergy? Do you find that you you share it's, ideas? It's or? more helpful than it is yes. competitive. Oh, I think, yeah. and I actually think it's healthy competition. You know, I, I think since we've been together, our work has only grown, and we've become more and more successful as okay. we push each other and support each other. So, and plus, our styles are very different. So, and I, I think with this show. Uh, we've been. In, I've, I know. I we influence each other yes. also, yeah. um, and some of our. Our subject matter is very different. I think. Yeah. yeah. Although I we, did just look at an image of yours, and I thought that looks a little bit like Sean's. She yeah. had a really round face, uh, and I thought that's interesting. Are you guys going to be the next Dylans? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I, I look at the Dylans, and I, I feel like I cannot sacrifice, make that sacrifice. <laughs> Like as far as putting someone else's identity, like sharing the identity of what I do, oh, I, I don't know that I could. I mean, and I love their stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like, but from what I understand, they had to do that because their egos. They were having so many ego clashes that they said, "Okay, we just we're gonna have to do this together, or we can't live together." Um, uh -huh. I, I think know. we were able to kind of be a little more harmonious, right? Right. I mean, we haven't <laughs> collaborated really yet, so... Would you so, like to? Um, Maybe. We, we've been... <laughs> we, we think about it, we talk about it. It's. It would just be a matter of yeah, how... Yeah, the, the, the right project, I think. Exactly. Yeah. Have you thought about writing your own stories? Yes. Yes. And today was very inspiring for that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's it, just being around other creative people, people who are doing it, and just other illustrators in general. Yeah. Yeah. Ideas yeah. start to... Not even ideas, but ideas that I have seem like they're more possible. It's a, you know, they're more, they have more potential than they do if I'm just on my own. So okay. back to your earlier question about living in Brooklyn around everyone else, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, if I was living in the middle of nowhere with no one else around, I would feel 
even a greater sense of competition because I think it would make up the competition in your head like, oh, all those people in New York are right. doing all right. of this They've and you know, I'm here in nowhere, in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> right. So it's nice being around other people and seeing the work that they're doing. Because it is, there is competition, but it's also very inspiring. So, yeah. One of the things that was just discussed at the A is for a Nancy conference was the mm -hmm. idea that um, black children often don't have books that are whimsical. Um, Do you feel like you've had any challenges finding books for your two children? Um, yes. Do you feel like that? <laughs> Sean said a quick yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. You mean particularly? That, that, that are whimsical. It's a challenge. I mean, and I read our children my books sometimes, which are, you know, mostly about African-American children, but, you know, it's sometimes hard. It's, you know, it's like I don't want to introduce slavery to a three-year-old. Right. You know, it's, it's very hard. And, um, you know, and I have to take responsibility for it in some ways because I haven't written anything. You know, I don't want to be like, oh, ah. those people, but... And some of the books are excellent, you know, but it is... It's... It is... It's hard. Challenge. Long and short of it. It's, it's challenging. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I... I do write, and I... I'm Your Peanut Butter Big Brother is about a, uh yeah. interracial family, right. and it is rather whimsical. The language yes. is sort of poetic and yes. playful and fun. Right. You know, um, I tend to, all my books, um, when I started illustrating other manuscripts, I always try to make them very multicultural and um, right. to reflect, you know, the world around us. Right. Um, and I, I'm still doing that in the books that I'm now writing, even if they're not directly dealing with issues of race, um, I'm, I make them reflect di a diverse reflect. society. Exactly. Yeah. So, That's great. And my books are, they're, they're not really serious in tone, so hopefully, you know, they'll be, they'll be appealing. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask you guys a question that may or may not end up in the final <laughs> version of this film. Do you think that your racial or gender difference impacts the kinds of projects you're offered? by publishers. You want to answer that first? Um, I think that, well, the fact that I'm white, I'm not going to be offered the same manuscripts right. that Sean, that Sean um, is offered. Um, gender, it, that's hard to say. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I can answer that. I mean, I also, now that I am only writing and illustrating, I'm not, I'm, I, I'm not really being offered right. other people's manuscripts. Other people's projects. Right. Um, okay. I'm developing them myself, and that seems to be going okay for now. So. Okay. Sean. Um, yes. <laughs> I don't know. Don't want to shoot myself in the foot. I do think both impact. Um, yes. Uh, I don't know how to. What was your well, one of the um, illustrators at A.S. for Nancy, Colin Bootman, right. was showing us his portfolio, and it was a lot of Frederick Douglass, and, and right. he said, you know, and he really admires those projects and is proud to have participated, yes. but he really wanted more whimsical, you know, there's a huge yes. demand for fantasy, but those those projects don't seem to come his way, and Nicole Tadgell said she felt she needed to start writing her own stories about fairies and things like that yes. because they simply weren't going to be offered to her. Right. Yes. Well, you know, I think your solution, Selena's solution is sort of beautiful and it's sort of more realistic. Selena's books, they're not all black, they're not all white, it's a combination of everyone, you know, mm -hmm. lots of different types of people. And that's the world, I mean, you know, if you just pan around the library, you right. see that. However, oftentimes in a book, you just see, you know, everyone's all one thing or all... So, yeah. I, I think, you know, even in film and television, which really frustrates me, you know, it's like... You watch a show and it's all one type of people. It's like, that's not the world. That's not. And that's um, not. I feel like it definitely isolates audiences and um, and it does a disservice to humanity in some ways because we're not reflecting reality. Um, not that everything has to reflect reality, but it's just, you know, we live in such a diverse world that it's so easy to make whatever art that you are doing that more diverse to reflect that. Um, that's what I strive for in my work, so. Great. Thank you very much, you guys. That was fantastic. Okay. <laughs>